Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're going to go with some stories. I'm going to talk to you about some weird and interesting things that have happened to me over the years. We're not going to learn much. Maybe we'll learn, you know, what not to do, what to do. I don't know, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it is better than a TikTok. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. There's 220 plus episodes, four plus years of content. Not all of it is good by any means, um, but uh, it's, it's all right. You know, it's pretty good. You can learn some stuff. Go back, binge it. Uh, musics have changed over the year, hairstyles have changed, weight gains, yeah. But anyway, if you are a repeat offender, if you are one of the cool kids, if you're somebody who watches every episode, you listen to every episode, listen or watch, you don't have to do both, you've given me that thumbs up there on YouTube, and more importantly, you've ordered your supplies through me, shameless plug, what's up? You have earned yourself the title of being a cool kid. Thank you so much. If you want to be a cool kid, put your orders in through me. Everybody needs supplies. Don't order yourself. Don't get through Amazon, man or ma'am. Don't buy with our competitors. They're not as cool as us. Uh, It costs you nothing extra, by the way, to have me put your order in. But I get credit for it, and that's how I live my my lavish lifestyle of uh, cutting up hot dogs in my mac and cheese. (laughs) No, but if you do want to let me uh, put your orders in, because I want you to let me put your orders in, my number is 862-312-2026. If you haven't saved my number yet, do it right now. I'll give it to you again. It's 862-312-2026. If you're out working on the job, uh, by the way, what's up? And you can't write it down right now, no big deal. Just go ahead and go back to this uh, as soon as you get in front of a computer. Save my number. I'm the only Jersey you know. Let me put your orders in. Just put everything in your cart and text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, it's all in my cart. Put that bad boy through. There you go. Shameless plug, but I have to do it. Um, by the way, if you like content, what you're here listening to a window cleaning podcast, have you not subscribed to the American Window Cleaner magazine? By the way, this is... Uh, This last month's uh, issue, this is how it comes, in a plastic wrap. It's got uh, the magazine in there, of course, and stickers. Uh, If you like stickers, this is a sneak peek, by the way, the next one. Uh, If you like stickers, I like you. Because stickers are awesome. If you want stickers, go ahead and subscribe to American Window Cleaner Magazine. Go to AWC. Dot, uh, awcmag.com uh, and go and buy some stuff too if you want to buy stickers and stuff Nick Steffner Steff, Steff, what's up man Nick Steffner Steffner man how am I not able I know dude dude's in Chicago super good uh, dude he has been buying a ton of stickers so he, I know he's decking stuff out like crazy so if you want sticker sheets go buy them they're super cheap we also have a sticker club go and check that out anyway so all the shameless plugs done Uh, I rambled a little bit. I apologize. It's really early, and I'm just not with it yet. Um, But today, we are going to be talking about stories. We'll just call it story time with Jersey. And the reason we're calling it that is because over the years, I've had some pretty interesting stories. I don't even want to say they're cool or bad. There's good ones and there's bad ones. There's interesting ones and ones that I'm like, how, how, how? Right, if you have a story, go to YouTube, search this video, WCR Nation, the most recent one called Story Time, and put your story in the comments. I want to hear the best story you have, the funniest story you have. I want to hear the worst story you have. I want to hear it all because it's all awesome and uh, we're in the culture. We're not going to learn a ton this week, but we're going to have some fun either way. So I'm at five stories that I'm going to touch on. Good and bad. And the first one, the first one I dwelled on for like two years. It sucked. Let me give you some background. So we did a project 
uh, that we ended up uh, bringing in high rise guys on to do some of it. We did a bunch of it. There was like lift work. The project was huge. We ended up having like 12, 12 people on the job at once. Something like that. And uh, just, it was a huge project, and we did it every year, and it was a very big ticket project, obviously, and it was always done in, like, the dog days of summer, which was great, because we were slow, and it was a nice chunk of money, anyway. Now, the problem with big jobs is, if you put all of your, like, ideas and thoughts in your, your, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? You've heard that. Now, the big thing is, uh, this particular one, we didn't do that, but it was a great summer job. Now, we get to cleaning it, and like I said, there's high-rise work, there's lift work, there's water-fed work, and all that. We get to this big complex, and I always have the property manager go through it, right? We walk around, and uh, we go through things like, oh, those windows still look like there's bugs on there, something ridiculous, which... Uh, by the time he got around to it, it was like a week later, and they were on a pond in this complex, and just bugs like crazy. So we ended up having to clean windows. Every time he walked around, we'd end up doing a bunch more windows again, even though they left uh, spotless. Fresh stuff, so it came off. But as we're walking, he says, uh, hey, um, by the way, I, I got a complaint that uh, the uh, card reader in the back of the building doesn't work. I said, oh, <clears throat> we didn't use any card readers. <clears throat> Excuse me. He goes, yeah, I know, but uh, it worked, and then you guys cleaned the windows, and it didn't work. Now, for reference, this card reader was in a part of the building there was no windows around. Like, it was literally, like, five feet away from a window on a second floor. And uh, I, I, I kind of played it on, like, maybe he's kidding. Maybe he's not, you know, why would he be bringing it up? Oh, well, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there, but it definitely wasn't from us. Yeah, well, it was from you. Uh, we're going to need $798 to replace this card reader. I was like, um, okay, well, let me do a little digging. Uh, show me which one. I go in and take pictures. There's no way. The water that we use in pure water wasn't anywhere even close to it anyway. We never even used that door. It was a door that didn't even really get used other than, I think, by employees taking smoke breaks. It just was not possible for anything. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do this right... I'm going to call the manufacturer. I'm going to get all that information on this reader. They're outside. There are no chemicals in pure water. It's just pure water. It's like rainwater, right? So I call. I get letters from them. They're sent in from their engineering department, their engineering teams. I get um, uh, documents from the the encapsulated thing, the contraption, how it's working, how it's done. This thing was like 13 years old. It just... It's 13-year-old card reader that just fizzled out, right? They said that too. These things are meant to be uh, last 8 to 10 years. It was 13 years. Whole thing. I got this whole proposal pack. I said, hey, okay, great. Well, we did some investigating. Yeah, like I said, there's there wasn't any really way. There was just impossible that we could have done anything. We weren't even over there. There was nothing that we could have done. I got all this information, and I handed them all these things. There's st- stacks and, and documents on their letterhead and, and payments. And I got down the uh, breakdowns of pure water and that there's nothing in there and all that stuff. And I handed it to him. He goes, oh, my gosh. He's like, I've never had somebody so involved in doing this. I'm like, yeah. Showed my professionalist. He goes, but we're not going to pay you unless we pay you minus that. And I need you to put that in writing. I'm like, but I, I just don't understand why you're having us pay for this reader, right? In the long term of things, this was like a multi-five-figure account. It really wasn't a big deal. But in my brain, you know, you know, sitting there listening. I know sitting here, he knew it wasn't us. And he's still trying to jack us up for some money. He goes, well, it worked before you came, and it didn't work after, and that's all I need to know. I said, well, this is a good contract for us. You know, we've done this work for years. We really want to keep this. I, you know, if you could promise me that we get your uh, account for the next three to five years, at least, you know, let me know. We, we kind of revisit it every couple years. Drop my phone, by the way. And uh, so he says, uh, absolutely. He goes, you're our guys, definitely. This is this is what we're doing. So, man, I drop the bill, write up the letter, say, yes, we're adjusting it because of this, blah, 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 blah. So the loss, we ended up buying, basically, this reader. We could use it as a tax write-off anyway. 
Uh, whole thing's done. Next year comes, and I kid you not, I call like normal. We're just calling to set up, uh, schedule it for the months. They don't really need to know, but they need to prep everybody. We decided to go with somebody else. I said, oh my gosh, he had promised me that we were going to continue to do this because I gave him, you know, this money for the free reader. And he goes, no, we just found somebody who's going to do it for a lot cheaper. And she hung up on me. Mother trucker. So yes, I ended up losing a multi five figure, five figure account over something that was not our fault. And I don't even know. I think he just felt like an a-hole and just didn't want to see us anymore. I don't know. But yeah. That was a broken reader, and it wasn't our fault. And if you have a story like that, tell me, because that one haunted me for so long. That really wrecked our bottom line just in the summer. Uh, really, really did. But from a story like that, where I lost tens of thousands of dollars, here's another one where um, I only lost one account because I let them go. But here's a fun one. I've talked about this one a little bit. Uh, I'll call it, let's see, uh, see my Richard or look at my Richard. You can kind of already see that. So we have this customer and the customer lady always slows pay. They're on a fixed income. Um, she's so happy that we do it, but yet doesn't really have the money. So I'm always chasing. It's a pain in my butt, but she's nice. Oh, well, right. It's one of those where like, I really wish I could get rid of this account, but whatever. We're helping her. You know, she's nice enough, whatever. So I get a call from my operations officer who happened to be the crew chief on the crew that was at the house. And he says, we're not going back in this house. That was the first thing he said. I said, what? He goes, you got to get over here. We're not going back in this house. This guy's going crazy. We're about to call the police. I'm like, what is going on? Now, mind you, it's the lady we always deal with. So I get in my truck, drive all the way over there. It's relatively close to our shop. So I get there and they're sitting in the truck. And he's just, the uh, crew chief's just, absolute going crazy i'm not doing this this isn't this isn't something we're ever doing we're not cleaning the windows here i'm like what's going on he's explaining it to me so i walk in and talk to the lady and she's like i'm sorry for my husband he uh is angry that his nurse isn't here and she's the one that does the the uh, sponge bath every day at 10 o'clock in the morning and she's not here and he's so angry he kind of took it on in your guys <sighs> So what had happened was, see what had happened was, so what happened was, is that um, on the um, uh, job, when they walked in, they uh, started doing windows and he was angry that they were there. He was angry that they were doing the windows and it wasn't his nurse. Okay. So with all this going on, they're cleaning the windows. She's yelling at her husband, like, calm down. You know they're here. We've seen them. We've been doing them for probably 10 years at this time. A few times a year, we do a bunch of services for them. You know who these guys are. He goes, I don't care. And they look up, and he's at the top of the stairs completely naked. And uh, uh, as all the screaming's coming on, the guy says to his wife, if they come up here, I'm going to shoot them in the blanking face. And now my guys are like, well, okay, so this is now turned into something. She's like, you're not going to do that. We don't even own a gun. He's just going nuts. Like, he's just going crazy. So they're like, well, we're not, we can't do anything here. We're going to go, we're going to leave. We're going to call Josh. So as they're walking out, it, you know, turn around, the guy's yelling at him or whatever at the top of the stairs and he's naked. And he goes, oh, so now you're going to leave. He's yelling at him. He says, if you want to come up here and take a look at my blank you can look at my blank all day long we could take pictures and he's up at the top of the stairs this is how they described it both of them the guy is probably in his 80s doing the helicopter you know if you're a guy you know what the helicopter is we've all had our <laughs> chances to do that he's at the stop at the top of the stairs saying if you want to look at my richard you can come up and look at my richard doing the helicopter at the top of the stairs after telling his wife that he was going to shoot them in the face true story so after all this they're still sitting in the truck i'm like oh my gosh i said her name i said there's no way that we can keep doing this there's just not a way and she's like well you know he's just having a hard time i said no like as soon as he threatens violence you know with everything going on in my head i'm like he's bat poop crazy so yeah i totally 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 makes sense so We've spent money, 
wasted money, lost accounts, and seen an old man's helicopter, but there's always a good story in there, and this is my $100,000 fluke, or $100,000 accident. And you guys may know this story, but I'm going to tell it anyway, because this is one of my favorite stories of... Let me, let me start off by saying this. In business, there's a lot of us who are like, yeah, I'm so awesome, I did all this. But think about your business. There's always going to be things in your business that helped you just by dumb luck. And here's one of them. So I'm driving down the interstate, and we had a customer uh, that, uh, not even a customer yet, But I got the contact information. I knew them through somebody. So I called them maybe once a year, once every six months. Just, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. We'd love to, you know, bid your your building. And as I'm driving up, I could see the truck lot. They are a, like, packaging style place. And there's semis all over there and the building with all the glass. So I'm like, well, I'm going to call them real quick. As I'm driving, I search everything. And the phone is ringing and I'm like... Maybe I'll wash their... Maybe they got to have fleet cleaning. I just talked or heard or read something about somebody doing fleet cleaning. Let's just see. So they uh, pick up and, hey, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, man, I'm just catching up, seeing how you're doing. I'd love to get you that bid for uh, your window cleaning. Just checking base with that. Uh, Your window cleaning or fleet cleaning. And they kind of threw it out there just to test the water. And he goes, no, hey, man, uh, you know, I always appreciate you calling, keeping up with us. It's awesome. Um, we don't need window cleaning. Our guys are still doing it on the inside, but something changes, you know, will definitely let me know and keep me in the loop and every six months or so is, is nice. I said, oh, yeah, no, no worries. He goes, but, 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 uh, flea cleaning, we are interested in that. Uh, we, uh, are firing our company. We are just not happy with them. They're just non-responsive. Uh, it's just a huge thorn on my side. Can you come and do a demo on Thursday? Now, mind you, this is the Friday four so i have less than a week and i don't own a pressure washer at this point not at all i'm like yeah sure i could do that demo right so if i couldn't have done the demo and i couldn't got everything i would let him know hey something you know came up i just can't get the demo but as soon as i hung up from him i pulled over and i'm like oh i don't have any of the equipment i've never done it i gotta watch videos i gotta train myself i gotta do all this so Starting at that point, I called the company that was outside of my city about 45 minutes to say, hey, I need something that'll set up for fleet cleaning. I need everything. He's like, okay, what? What? I don't care. Brands, you pick stuff. Your budget, I think on the equipment, the pressure washer itself was 10, 10 grand or something like that, 11,000. I don't remember. Uh, but you got 10 grand to spend on the pressure washer. Just get everything you can and I need it installed. All that price needs to be under that. He goes, oh, okay. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it all set up. What kind of truck are we putting in? I said, I don't own a truck yet. Uh, what are we doing? He's like, well, if you're doing fleet cleaning, you need, you know, two totes, IBC totes. Um, those are 275s, 550, 550 gallons. Here's the weight. This is the kind of truck you need. No worries. Get everything ordered. Uh, I'll be there as soon as you call me. Tell me you can put it in. Okay. So hang up with him all the that weekend and next i'm looking for trucks looking for trucks looking for trucks i can't find trucks anywhere i finally find an isuzu uh cab over that's like kind of right there on the uh uh, uh wait but it would work it's like ah oh, man i go talk to this guy it's like three grand for this truck he's like oh yeah you know thing works kind of fine you know it's just it's getting there so it's not super powerful i'm like great buy the truck on monday he calls me up on Wednesday, so I have this truck. I had to prep it, paint the. I had to paint the bed and coat the bed and all that stuff. It's all there, it pretty much dry. I get up there. He starts installing it. It goes through Wednesday and Thursday. I ended up missing some fittings. Uh, I had to get some extra fittings and stuff. I miss the bid on Thursday, but we get it done Thursday night at like eight o'clock at night. So I call him up on Friday morning, like, hey, man, sorry, I didn't uh, get a chance to get out by you yesterday. It was ran a little bit long. We didn't get back to the shop till about 8, not saying that I just bought all this equipment. Can we come today? He goes, yeah, yeah, no problem. Just uh, come about like uh, noon. Cool. I go over there, show up, and I pull up, and he's there, and he's out there smoking with this guy, and they're doing their thing. I pull up, hey, man, he's like, hey, hey, hey. 
Turns back around, he's talking to this guy, they're doing this work, right? I'm cleaning the truck, I'm like, everything I've seen, I'm like, oh gosh, I hope this all works. Like the machine, you know that smell when everything's new, and I'm like, oh, I just gotta make it through this one truck, I'm just doing a demo, and if anything like breaks or something was leaking or something, I can fix it. It's all brand new equipment, right? But it was build, it was a build. Get all done, and I get all done, the guy never paid attention to me, I'm like, I just spent like 15 G's with everything, he's just gonna be like, nah, Thanks though. And now I got a $15,000 piece of equipment that I, I get done. And the guy's like, yep, yeah, cool. Yeah, man, you're hired. You're starting next week. It ended up being like three days a week, all these trucks, blah, blah, blah. It was a $98,000 contract. And it was all on a fluke. It was all in an accident. It was all on, Hey, can I get your windows cleaned or fleet cleaning? It was on an accidental ask. And it was a huge gamble. You want to talk about gambles? That was a financial gamble. Cause that was a very, uh, earlier on it worked out though so yeah on accident i closed a ninety-eight thousand dollar contract the guy that was in charge of the fleet i had never ever ever met before he was like a guy who so we had done janitorial at the same time and i had tried to get in on the janitorial side of that business uh and that's how we first talked to the guy the first time and uh, never did happen so anyway there you go um yeah, on that side of it, it uh, it was definitely crazy. Another side note with that truck, it did not last me more than three months. It started to, it was just underpowered, so I ended up buying an F550, uh, almost new, big stainless steel bed. It was awesome, right? So much more stronger, easier to drive, all that fun stuff. So I went to sell my other, my other truck, and I'm like, ah, I paid like three grand for the thing. Like, I'll sell it for three grand. Let's see if I can make my same money. Not one person called me, not one person. So I took it down off of Craigslist. I put it right back up within 10 minutes for $6,000. And I had like 12 calls in the first hour. And somebody ended up buying the thing for $3,500. So if you ever want to put something up for sale that's used, just put it up for more than you think it's worth. And then have somebody lowball you in their brain. And then they're super excited to get it. The guy like bought it and like ran. Like he was so excited to get be out of there because he gave got such a good deal. Anyway. There you go. That's a $98,000 accident. Um, another quick one that's not really good, but it made us think is we were on a job and this lady, and I want to call her a lady, but she had to have been 16 to 18. She was like young and she kept walking by. She's in a mini skirt, middle of the day, walking past us on like the pool surround for no reason, going to like the garage and back. And she's in these like fancy shoes that are really clocky really loud so you could tell that she just kept walking back and forth so we're taking apart windows and um we're going back and forth now on this particular job we had our normal crew of two and because they had such a full day they had the new guy one of the new guys was doing some training so i was there helping the new guy just through the morning and then they were going to take over at night so there's four of us so we're there doing this whole thing they go through the whole thing and, and they're taking windows down and windows are open and they're cleaning things you know and this lady starts yelling at her kid, yelling at her kid. And she says to the kid in the conversation with everything else and every other swear about how she's, you know, uh, out there um, ruining your life and everything else. She says, if you keep effing up, you're going to end up like these guys cleaning windows. Yes, that is what she said, yelling in the house where we had four window cleaning people all around the house. So all of us heard it, of course, like not like, what did you just, it was like screaming and uh, one of my guys at the time was like, "This, we're, we're I'm done. Like I, f, f, f this lady. I'm not. I said, whoa, whoa, come down, come down. Like let's just finish the job. We'll talk about it later. So get done. Uh, all that's done. She gives us the money, tips us, of course. Didn't realize that we probably heard that. Uh, get done with everything. The end of the day, we're talking about it when they got back to the shop, and they're still just like ruin their day. I said. Let's stop and think about it because the lady paid us to do services. So the normal crew that was there, they ended up getting $93 an hour for that job. $93 a man hour is what they were paid for that job. That included the tip and that included everything. Now, of course, the text didn't make that, but like that's what she paid. I said, man, I sure hope that she does not screw up so bad in her life that she needs to make $93 an hour. That would be terrible. So, by the way, if you ever think you're just a glorified janitor, understand that that is the 
best, one of the best things, top five best things about being a window cleaner is that people don't know what it's like to be a window cleaner. They don't know how much money we really make, right? Do this. If you don't believe me, do this sometime. Go to somebody at a party every single time. You know, your wife will, hey, this is Susan. She's my friend. This is her husband, Jack. And you're like, hey, Jack. The first thing out of his mouth and be like, hey, what do you do? Because that's what guys do, right? If you're a woman, maybe women do that too, but that's uh, definitely what I run into. I always, always, always tell people that I'm a window cleaner. I'm not now because I don't own a window cleaning business. But even when I owned a window cleaning business, I haven't cleaned windows in years. But everybody's like, oh, what do you do? I'm always like, I'm a window cleaner. People, 99.9998% of the time, are like, oh, yeah, no, there's tons of glass out there, right? I mean, gosh, you do the big buildings, right? No, I do ground level stuff. We don't do big buildings, but everybody thinks that, right? But they try to like make, oh, good for you. Now, I've met a lot of good people who are like, dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm like an electrician, man, out in the field. all Yeah, yeah, sweating your ass. I, that's what I do. I'm sweating all day, right? You can find the people who you connect with. And then there's other people who are like, oh, nice. Oh, okay. Well, cool. Well, I'll catch up with you. I got to go talk to. And then they leave and they're like, it's just a status thing. So it's really, really nice to kind of put that out there. You find out who the real people are, by the way, if you do that. Find out who the real people are. I don't know as much, by the way, if uh, everybody's done that. If you've had weird responses from that, let me know. Um, But people are very, very confused at that, by the way. Um, And probably one of the greatest initial stories that are unbelievable in my company is when I repoed my own truck. Now, let's paint the picture. At the time, I had one truck and I still was running out of my house. I hadn't, we had, you know, commercial properties and things that we, we, we owned that, that we ran out of, but we didn't have all that yet. And I only had the one truck. Well, I had just gotten a personal vehicle, so I wasn't always driving that one. So that was left at my house in my driveway. We went, uh, we closed down for the week of the 4th, and we went up by my wife's family, who was like two and a half hours away. And two or three days into that, I get a phone call, and it's uh, a lady who is like the girlfriend of a guy that was working for me. And she says, hey... I just wanted to let you know, your truck is over on XYZ Street. I said, no, I don't think so. Uh, It's in my driveway. Like, no, I I don't. I mean, it's in my driveway. There'd be no reason it's anywhere. I'm gone. I'm not even in town. She goes, yeah, uh, but I think the guy's name uh, had um, relapsed and um, stole your truck. I'm like, well, this is weird, but let's let's go back to him. Awesome guy who had problems in the past. And at the time, I was he was a great employee, super nice dude. Uh, it really was working out very well. But when I left for vacation for myself, we closed down for them, uh, for him also. And there was another guy at the time. Um, but it was because if I'm gone, they can close down. We have like a week off. Here's a summer bonus. You have a week off. Well, if you give a recovering person a big chunk of money and a week of nothing to do, unfortunately, I feel like that was kind of my error. I didn't think it through. But what had ended up happening was she called me to tell me basically that he, she thought he had relapsed and the truck was outside of his dealers, friends, whatever. So I called up one of my neighbors and was like, hey, this is a weird question, but is the truck in the driveway? And he was like, no, there's nothing in the driveway. I'm like, okay, cool, thanks. So I ended up having to. I called and called and called and called and called and called and called. And I couldn't get a hold of him. I called, texted, everything. He wasn't answering. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's like really stealing the truck or what's going on. So I called a buddy that I knew who owned a tow company. He was like, I don't care what it costs you. Go and repo this truck. Here it is. Tow it. Keep it at your lot and I'll pick it up. So... They come, pick up the truck, bring it over. It ended up costing me $250. And finally, either that day or the next day, he calls me. He's like, hey. He goes, you didn't have to do that. 
I said, do what, man? Where are you? Did you take the truck? He's like, yeah. I just, I needed it for a ride. So I walked over, I got the truck, and I, I went over to a buddy's house. We played video games. I'm like, what? You can't steal my work truck. He's like, I didn't steal it. Like, you know, I, I had a key to it. I said, but it's my truck. You can't, you can't do that, man. I got no idea what's going on. I get calls, this thing's over here, and I get, anyway. So I had to repo my own truck from this guy. And uh, it cost me a lot of money and it ended up firing the guy because like at that point, you're just, you're, it's, it's nonsense, nonsense. So those are my stories. I know that they were a rambling of stories and some of you probably aren't even listening anymore, but those are the stories. If you have better stories, tell me on YouTube, comment down below because I want to know. More importantly, if you're like, hey, thanks for putting some content out and uh, helping me over the last half hour, you know, speed things up and you want to put orders in through me, well, that would absolutely make my day because that's what I do. It is the only form of income that I have is putting in orders for you. So yeah, let me do that. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, here is my order. It's in my cart. Put it in. I'll verify an address, pull the trigger, cost you nothing extra. It's easier to even have me as your rep. huh? I'm nicer than not having a rep. huh? And uh, yeah, it really makes me very, 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 very happy. So please do that. On a side note, I also own American Window Cleaner Magazine. And to tell you more about that, here's some more uh, issues. If you haven't gotten your hands on a copy, these are just uh, a few of the back copies. If you haven't gotten your hands on a subscription... Go and do that right now. It is a monthly subscription, a window cleaning magazine that is completely dedicated to window cleaning. There's tips and tricks and pictures and everything that you can have in a magazine shipped to your door every single month. Be awesome. Be one of the elite people who are learning in your industry. Give me that awesome high five for content and get some radical stickers. What did I do? Oh, stickers. Stickers. By the way, if you want, buy some stuff. AWCMAG.com is the website. Everything is for sale. We are almost out of one month of the stickers, but we still have like seven months of sticker sheets. Uh, we try to get enough for that people buy, but every single day we get people that are buying them. There's also a sticker club. If you're like, I don't want a magazine, I don't know how to read, uh, you can actually just get the sticker club. We also have a lot of people who buy the magazine and the sticker club because then they get extra stickers. So go do that. Shameless plugs are all over. Please do check it. Support me if you want. It means the world to me. Uh, but until next week, go out there and be epic.